This is the solution to problem two from the recitation on March 11th on conservation of momentum. So here we've got a car collision. So collision means use conservation of momentum. And using a conservation laws always means that it's a good idea to have clear before and after pictures of what's going on. So let's draw those. Before, I have, let's see, the Mini Cooper is going 10 meters per second westward. And the Toyota Camry is going 15 meters per second northward. Uh, the two of them collide. So afterwards, I've got two cars stuck together. You can probably guess they're going to be moving up and to the left at some final velocity that we don't know. It's always a good idea to come up with what symbols you're going to use for things. Uh, so we'll call the mass of the Mini Cooper um, M1. We'll call its initial velocity V1 initial. We'll call this M2. And we'll call this value 15 meters per second V2 initial. So total momentum before the collision. Well, I need to add up their momentum. Let's write down what each one is. And here I'm going to use uh, unit vector notation. So this question, will your answer be one value or two? This is a reminder that momentum is a vector. It has x and y components, which you have to think about separately. So it is two values. So the initial momentum of object one of the Mini Cooper is going to be m1 v1. Here I'm doing vector math. So that's going to be twelve hundred kilograms times well I'll I'm not going to put in numbers. I'll always put numbers in at the end. Um, I've written that as a vector, but it's going westward, right? So that means it's the negative x direction. So that's going to be m1 oops, minus m1 v1i i hat. For the second object, for the Camry, pi2, m2, times its velocity. Let's see, it's going northward. So just to remind us here, this is the minus x direction, because I'm using the conventional coordinate system. And that's the plus y direction. So this then will be m2 v2i in the positive j direction. Now, the whole point of part b is that the total momentum, well, Oops, I didn't finish part A. I'm supposed to find the total momentum, right? That means add them together. So the initial momentum total is just the sum of those, which would be minus m1 v1i 
i hat plus m2 v2i j hat. The total momentum after the collision is the same. That's the entire point of conservation of momentum. So I can say here that since momentum is conserved, the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So the total momentum after the collision is the same as the initial momentum. Part C now asks, what are the speed and direction of the cars after the collision? So as we saw in the beginning, I don't know the final velocity after the collision. I'd like to. Uh, this actually really happened. Um, the two cars collided in an intersection that I was walking past, and they came flying at me on the sidewalk, and I had to dive out of the way and then call 911 because someone was hurt. All's well that ends well. Uh, she just spilled like really hot coffee, hot coffee on herself and burnt herself. Everyone was okay. So to find the speed and direction of the cars after the collision, well, um, I know the momentum, right? I know that P final Its x component is minus m1 v1i, and its y component is m2 v2i. Now, these two objects, the two cars are moving together, right? So if the two cars are moving together, then I know that their final momentum is the sum of their masses times their final velocity. So equating those things, this is going to be equal to m1 plus m2 vfx. This is going to be equal to m1 plus m2 vfy. So if I do the algebra in each case, this is going to give me that vfx is minus m1 v1i over m1 plus m2. And vfy is minus, whoops, not minus, is m2 v2i all over m1 plus m2. And now, all there is to do is put in the numbers. So let's see. Uh, the, their mass is, uh, the masses are 1,200 and 2,000, and their speeds were 10 and 15. So going to my handy-dandy Python interpreter here, Let's see, 1,210, 2,015. So I have minus 1,200 times 10 meters per second, all divided by 1,200 plus 2,000 kilograms. So the final velocity in x winds up being minus 4 meters per second. Final velocity in y, going back to our Python interpreter, let's see, this uh, car was had a mass of 2,000 kilograms and was going 15 meters per second. So 
So that's minus 10 meters per second. Whoops, plus 10. Come on, eraser. There we go. So I'm getting a final velocity vector that's a little bit to the left and a lot up. So this is kind of what we expected to be going uh, up and to the left. And since this car on the bottom, the Camry, here, is both, oops, I'm off the screen there. Sorry, folks. Whoa, what am I doing? I can fix this, give me one minute. Bloop, there we are. Uh, since the Camry is both faster and more massive, you can expect the motion afterwards to be mostly up and a little bit to the left. But this part of the problem asks for speed and direction, not x and y components. So continuing this down, maybe we'll put it down here. and only use part of the space for part D. Um, the final velocity vector is like this. Its x and y components are like that. there's some angle, I can just do trig. So if I know that this is minus 4 meters per second, and that is 10 meters per second, uh, let's do some trig. So arc 10, I think it's a 10 in Python, 4 over Four. Uh, that's in radians, so we need to convert this to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. That's 63 degrees. And we might as well do the Pythagorean theorem here too. 10 squared is 100, 4 squared is 16, uh, gives me 10.8 meters per second. So the magnitude of the final velocity is 10.8 meters per second. And the angle, what did we get? We got 63 degrees uh, north of west. So all of that belongs to part C. Part D asks, how far do the cars skid before coming to rest? Uh, we can do this with either the work energy theorem, which you hadn't learned yet when you came to this recitation, or you can do it with just plain old kinematics. I'm sorry, my microphone keeps falling down. So to do this with, uh, we'll do it with plain old kinematics, since that's what you knew at the time. So I know that uh, I can relate the initial and final velocities to the uh, acceleration and the change in distance. So this is the third kinematics relation. Vf squared minus v naught squared equals 2a delta x. Where here, I know that the final velocity is going to be, whoops, that's right, final velocity is going to be zero because they are skidding to rest. Ah! Sorry folks, I am still getting used to touchscreens. I need to just disable my touchscreen when I am doing this. Oh, nope, actually, it appears that my on-screen writing program crashed, so I've now got it back. 
I'm using an experimental piece of software here. My apologies for that. So I know the initial velocity, 10.8 meters per second. I want to find the distance traveled, but I need to know the acceleration. What's that? Well, the acceleration here is going to be, it's negative, because I'm, I'll just decide that. Um, just to, to make a note that it's the opposite the direction of motion. This is a one-dimensional motion here, one-dimensional uh, problem. So that's going to be the force of friction um, divided by the mass, which is the combined mass of the cars. The normal for uh, this, well, let's just do it out. This is the normal force times the coefficient of friction divided by the mass. The normal force will just be mg. So the acceleration is just mu g. So this gives me that minus v naught squared equals 2 mu g delta x. So delta x, the minus sign. So delta x is, the minus signs will cancel, is going to be v naught squared over 2 mu g. Let's put in those numbers. Uh, the initial velocity here, meaning the velocity right after the collision, find my handy dandy Python interpreter. I will get uh, faster and better at this as I do more of these. My apologies. Um, so the initial velocity was 10.8 meters per second squared. Mu was 0.6. G will use 10. Uh, gives me 19.44 meters. Uh, the numbers that I've given you are the realistic ones from this problem, where two cars, in fact, did have a collision and came flying at me on the road. Um, that's about how far they, they went. They came up onto the sidewalk, and I had to get out of the way. Uh, so this is the solution to uh, problem two from March the 11th recitation. Uh, the others will be in another video.